right, we got some legendary memes, okay? This is where are they today? You know what I'm saying? We got a couple people that made Vine what it is and Vine, you know what I'm saying? So let's check this out. The people in these 10 classic memes look completely different. Dang. He was Vine, fam Vine famous. Vine famous, Vine famous. I don't know. I, I, I know where these Vines are from, the rest of these. But I don't know where they, you know, blew up at. To when they first what went viral, starting with Side Eye Chloe, which came from a 2013 video titled Lily's Disneyland Surprise. In the video, the parents tell their two kids, Lily and Chloe, that they're ditching school to instead. Oh, I, rem I do remember this clip. And she's like, <laughs> to Disneyland. Chloe, we're going to Disneyland. Oh my God. <laughs> with the moment then being shared to Tumblr, where it received over 2 million notes with the title, I just love this because Chloe is like, the hell is this girl crying about? The post then prompted a BuzzFeed article titled, Side Eye and Chloe is officially the patron saint of Tumblr, in which they'd show that the meme had expanded and was yeah. now being put over everything from album covers to religious figures. Around four years after the meme first blew up, Chloe visited the Brazilian Google office, where her face had been turned into an elevator and was being used around the city for advertising. So we just drive around and there's my child on a billboard. I was just That's actually hilarious. blown away. But what happened to Chloe after the hype died down? After appearing in the meme at the age of two, Chloe's mother continued to video her life up until the age of 10, at which point the family decided to sell the meme as an NFT, achieving a price of 74,000 US dollars. They plan on using the money to put their kids through college, which oh, isn't nice. a bad idea given Chloe and her sister are now both in their teens, as is Dennis Collin, Nice. See, that's okay. That's 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 wholesome. You know what I'm saying? NFTs are fucking useless, but they use the money for a good thing. Go to college, you feel me? So okay, not not a bad, you know what I'm saying? Not a bad turnout. So known as the Popeyes kid. The meme began with an extremely basic vine back in August 2013, Ooh, where the him. real Snoopy videoed a random kid in Popeyes who was waiting to refill his drink. Terrio at Popeyes. Ooh. Say ooh. ooh. The following day, the image made its way over to Twitter with the caption, when I see my teacher at a store, with the subsequent popularity of the meme, giving the kid social anxiety throughout his early teens. However, this would motivate him to increase his skills as a football player, making a post on Twitter roughly nine years after first oh, going- Oh, I did see that from Popeyes to state champion. I saw it. I definitely saw this tweet. Viral, reading from Popeyes to state champion. The post was then reshared to Dennis's Instagram with the caption, I need everyone to repost this and tag at Popeyes. I just want to talk business, which was followed by another post only three days later, announcing that he'd been officially sponsored by the company. He'd then feature in their Super Bowl commercial where he'd announce his own celebrity meal deal called the Eyes on the Fries or Pies Offer, which then led to him winning Breakthrough Athlete of the Year at his Lake Erie College just a few months ago. Although, nice. while Dennis's story started low and ended triumphantly El Reseda's story nice okay you know what I'm saying way to hey way to benefit off of it you know what I'm saying this this I, I like it I like it it's a good story you know what I'm saying nigga got to his bread did what he had to do you know Never mad at that. Story started triumphantly, but ended in tragedy. The what? meme was born back in June 2007, when El Resides, translating to The Giggles, was interviewed on a Spanish TV show, where he'd display quite possibly the most contagious laugh in human history. <laughs> 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 Within only five days of the original interview, the clip had made its way over to YouTube. However, in September 2020, El Resides was hospitalized as a result of diabetes, where he had to have his left leg amputated. In response to the unfortunate situation, a French video forum raised 14,000 euros for El Resides, allowing him to purchase an electric scooter and wheelchair, although within only six months, he was back in the hospital. El Resides passed away on the 28th of April 2021 from complications related to his illness. Yet his presence on the internet Aww. will likely live forever, as will bad luck. Damn, that fucking sucks. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's, now that's tragic as hell. Damn. Leg amputated from diabetes is crazy. Crazy.
Brian's whether he likes it or not. The person in I remember bad luck, Brian. the photo's real name is Kyle Craven, who deliberately purchased a cheap thrift shop outfit so he could take a terrible yearbook photo. His friend then downloaded the photo, added the caption, takes driving test, gets first DUI, and posted it to the Advice Animal subreddit on the 24th of January 2012 with the title Bad Luck Brian. The meme was then remade with a different caption reading, falls asleep in class, wet dream, with the now clearly established purpose causing the meme. Memes used to be so simple and straightforward, and they used to make you giggle. Look at this. Memes used to dead ass be a picture with some words on it in a bold font, and niggas would be crying, laughing. Just simple. Now you got all this complicated shit trying to make people laugh. Niggas' attention span is so fucking short. It's crazy. See how the world changed? In the chat, this was like. This was a little less than, a little over 10 years ago. Within a 10 year span, life has changed so much. The way we laugh, joke about things, the things we talk about, you know what I'm saying? Him to go viral. Ask Siri to tell a joke she turns on front camera. Stops, drops, and rolls into another fire. Parents get divorced, no one wants custody. No one the virality wants of bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> now that's still hilarious though. Parents get divorced, no one wants custody. That is a cool, bro. Man, listen, that shit is hilarious. It is so easy, so easy, so simple, bro. Oh my God. Oh, that's Chocolate Thunder. Oh, that's, no, no, Chocolate Rain, Chocolate Rain. Chocolate Rain. Zay, is it Zay Tunday? That's the, what the fuck is his name? Chocolate Rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate Rain. Yo, YouTube used to be a totally different space. Chocolate Thunder, I bro, I'm mixing this shit. It's, it was a while ago, man. Relax. Chocolate Thunder. You, do you remember his name? Is Zay Tunde or some something, something like that? Lock Brian led him to recreate the meme at VidCon two years later, before he'd then get recognized by Seth Rogen, which turned into advertising opportunities with McDonald's, the General Car Insurance, and Volkswagen. Bad Luck Brian then featured in a book on t-shirts in over 20 different games, which according to an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, made him between $15 and $20,000 in the three years after first going viral. The article also explained that Brian works as a project manager for his father's construction company where according to his LinkedIn, he recently became the vice president after 17 years experience. Nice. Brian has since gotten married and had two kids, although as shown by this photo, they might not be a fan of the meme. <laughs> Despite this, Brian recreated the photo for his 32nd birthday, although can you even talk about bad luck Brian without mentioning scumbag Steve? The I, I never knew the name of this one, but I saw it, bro. <laughs> I never knew the name of this meme, but I definitely saw this one a lot. The guy in the photo had posted the image to his MySpace back in 2006. However, it wouldn't be until the 12th. You better get some high class chronic for the party. I ain't bringing the beer. 21st of January 2011, when the photo was reposted to r slash funny, with 11 different captions representing him as the unreciprocal stoner that everybody had in their school. I've never seen a meme I could relate to more. I knew so many kids like this in high school, and unfortunately hung out with a lot of them for a while, stupid high school phase. This one is on the money, only made funnier when the real person in the picture came forward as 22-year-old Blake Boston, who was unemployed and wanting to fight anybody who talked about the meme. Yo, people need to watch their mouth with the scumbag Steve. My name's not Steve. And if I find out who created this shit, then I'll follow in the right. Oh my god, that is actually hilarious. The fact nigga was on the fact, bro. The fact that he was actually a scumbag for real and unemployed is hilarious. That he's a real scumbag makes the meme a thousand times funnier. Steve then took advantage of the fame by launching his own rap career, starting a series called Scumbag Thursdays, and attending RuffleCon 2012, where he'd gained favor from the public after eventually embracing the meme. By this point, however, his popularity had well and truly faded, and scumbag Steve fell back into obscurity. That would be until April 2021, when Know Your Meme aired an update on his his life. My name is Blake Boston, aka Scumbag Steve. In which he'd show that he still had the hat while explaining that he was engaged, had two kids, and was trying to start a band. That very same month. Niggas, nah, still having. Bro, that shit, what did it say? 2006? He, t he uploaded that picture? Still having the hat from 2006 is absurdity. That's over 10 years of having that fucking stink ass hat. That shit is. That hat is not even. Oh my god. 
Throw that shit out, bro. Scumbag Steve sold the meme as an NFT for 57,000 US dollars before making a post on Twitter reading, whoever this is, thank you. You have no idea what this meant to me and my two boys. I'm humbled and so grateful, turning Scumbag Steve into good guy Greg, whose identity is still a mystery more than 12 years later. Good guy Greg has been described as the antithesis of Scumbag Steve. The captions generally depict the character as kind, generous, or empathetic to other people, having blown up around four months after Scumbag Steve with this image here. Sleeps on your couch, makes breakfast. Although despite the meme's instant popularity, the person in the picture never came forward to claim that it was them, until around three months later when the following post was made to the Ask Me Anything subreddit. I passed the six-week challenge and crewed alongside good guy Greg. I'm a commercial fisherman AMA, attaching five supposed photos of the man who looked nothing like good guy Greg. <laughs> Am I the only one who can't see the resemblance to GGG, leading other commenters to dig a little deeper. How did you come to find out he was good guy Greg? We showed him a picture of good guy Greg and he said that it was him. We didn't tell him that his picture was famous. Hmm. Did GGG wonder why you had a picture of him? Not really. What really? What the hell? So this random dude hops onto the same boat as him and just happens to have a picture of him from who knows how long ago and he's just, yeah, that's me and doesn't take a second to wonder why. In a different AMA, a user hmm. claimed to know the real identity of the real good guy Greg before posting this photo, which while looking extremely similar was still debunked given the difference in yeah it still don't look like him eye color. The person in the picture likely didn't want to be famous from a photo of him smoking, yet this comment puts forward a much more beautiful theory. He didn't come forward because he's a good guy who isn't interested in fame. He's humble and happy knowing that his picture is out there giving people joy and he's satisfied with that. He doesn't need the credit or the attention and it's hard to give an update on someone who's practically a ghost. Although the overly attached girlfriend happens to be the opposite, having spent over 10 years on YouTube talking about the downsides of becoming a meme. The overly attached girlfriend came from a video titled JB Fan Video in which a YouTuber named Lena Morris parodied Justin Bieber's song Boyfriend with lyrics depicting her as the stereotypical clingy girlfriend. Although as the meme began to go viral- say restraining order, I say long distance relationship is crazy. Oh, see, nah. Okay. It took only 11 days before Lena mentioned that she was uncomfortable with having her face everywhere. I'm always- in amused by the overly attached GF tweets. Then I realize my face is associated with it and I'm slightly disturbed. Still awesome. Despite being slightly disturbed by the meme, it would shoot Lena into stardom with every video on her channel racking up over a million views each, although Damn. this fame wouldn't last forever. The meme slowly lost its relevance and by 2015, three years later, Lena was barely gaining 100,000 views per video. By 2019, Lena had completely abandoned her channel, prompting an upload titled Breaking Up With YouTube, in which she'd explain how fame had taken a toll on her mental health. I sort of landed myself in a real depression and I was keeping it a real deep secret. For this reason, she'd then state that she was quitting YouTube for good. I know that this part of my life Damn. is done and it's time to say goodbye. Before announcing in April 2021 that she was selling her meme as an NFT. It managed to- Damn. Damn! God damn! achieve a mind-blowing price of 411,000 US dollars, during which she'd give her live reaction on Twitter. What? BRB, I need a minute. What the fuck? Also, thank you too for walking me through all this. And by stating, so what? BRB, I need a minute. WTF. Truly, you have no idea how this is going to change my life. I mean it. I'm so incredibly thankful and also still just blown away. So weird, so cool. WTF. Thank you, internet. Although she could still never be as confused as the have you ever had Damn, a dream kid. Days. The meme came from a 1999 HBO kid show and featured an unknown child who was attempting to recount this quote from Hercules. Haven't you ever had a dream? Something you wanted so bad you'd do anything? Instead completely fumbling his words. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 want you want him to do you so much you could do anything? In June 2011, approximately 12 years after the show aired, the clip was reposted to YouTube where it went unbelievably viral, having racked up over 80 million views since Damn. it was first posted. Although still, nobody knew the name of the child. That would be until the 8th of July 2021, when Wavy Websurf posted this video, prompting a message from a fan who told Wavy, Hey man, I know who the kid is from Have You Ever Had a Dream? Went to high school with him. I'll give you his name so you can go check him out for yourself. 
yourself. He probably won't want to be out there like that, but thought it was cool you were looking and thought I'd give you the answer you were searching for before attaching a Facebook profile of someone named Joseph Serkiel, who had the dream kid as his profile picture. After confirming that it was in fact him, the two recorded an interview where Joe explained that he was now working in the corporate world with the wavy web surf interview then leading to a BuzzFeed video, oh. which has since received almost 10 million views. Joe still looks pretty similar to yeah, how he looked sure. as a child. However, the kazoo kid looks almost unrecognizable. The origins of this meme are actually very similar to that of hey. the dream kid. Who are you? Yo, nah, these, me these memes is top tier. I'm off work, welcome in. Kid, as both include a five-year-old child landing a role on a VHS TV show, only to achieve random success on YouTube many years later. In this case, the 50 million view video was called Yuan Kazoo, and given it was filmed 25 years prior in 1989, people began to wonder where the kid ended up. Using his name listed in the credits, Brett Ambler, people were able to track down his Twitter, and since he was now in his mid-30s, he looked like a totally different person. With his newly found accidental fame, Brett announced that he'd be hosting an Ask Me Anything on which he was asked, what profession do you have now? Are you an actor or musician? Responding with, I'm lucky enough to say that I'm still an actor and musician, which can be confirmed on his YouTube channel, oh. where the kazoo still appears in almost every video. But while the kazoo kid continues to document his media presence, the 9 plus 10 kid has been so quiet, people thought he became a missing person. What? After the legendary Vine was posted back in June 2013, an article was published to the website Hustlers titled, 9 plus 10 equals 21 one kid vine has reportedly run away from home and currently being searched for read goodbye note here which damn Wait. Stated the child whose real name is Habib Sis ran away from his home Saturday night and is currently being searched for throughout the whole Baltimore area. Authorities say the child left a goodbye note in his bedroom that read, I'm tired of everyone laughing at me. I'm running away forever now. If you want to find me, the only clue I'm leaving is 21. When the article was reposted to the IGN forums, users showed concern. However, it was quickly debunked when the original oh. Viner uploaded a new video captioned, I My thought, little Nah, that's crazy. I really thought... I hate people like that, man. Why would you do that? Who the fuck? Why would you make up a false ass running away story? That's fucking corny as hell. Bro is all good. Whoever made up that story has no life. By the way, his name is Xavier. However, despite being given his first name, there's almost no other information about him anywhere on the internet. His last online appearance was in December 2014 when he'd recreate the meme. You stupid. Why not? No, but son. 21. Although since then, the kid has completely vanished. His brother who uploaded the original Vine continues to post gym videos on TikTok and YouTube. However, his last name isn't public, so we can't figure out Xavier's full name. In a 9 plus 10 <gasps> kid iceberg, one of the bottom tiers states, there was a rumor going around that the kid signed up for the Area 51 raid back in 2019, although there's no source on the post or on Google. Given the Vine is more than 10 years old, Xavier is now presumably in his late teens or early 20s, although given he didn't 21? really care about his fame in the first place. Hi, right, bro, you know you famous, bro? Yeah. You got like 200,000 revines, bro. Okay. He's likely made the deliberate choice to keep his identity hidden. No! The people in these 10 class- Damn. Hey, W video though, you know what I'm saying, 21? Damn, Vine, yo. If Vine just knew how to monetize the way TikTok is doing right now, Boy, Vine was top tier content, okay? Vine was top tier. Look at all the stars it's made. A lot of people that you watch on YouTube blew up from Vine, bro. It's crazy work. Crazy work. But don't you know what I'm saying? TikTok better. TikTok got its whole algorithm, its whole source from Vine. TikTok Vine. No Vine. TikTok. Be for real. Come on, bro. But, W video, nonetheless.